All right, young scientists, we have uh, this week's uh, assignment, and it is on our science pages. And if you look at, um, let's see, we got, here we go, May 4th through May 8th. And um, this is the list of your assignments. Uh, read through these notes. And if you haven't done so yet, it's loaded with um, a lot of information. And as all of this learning that we do remotely is happening, it's really hard to cover everything uh, with the detail that we might be able to in class with more discussion and questions. So hopefully um, you're looking through this um, on your own. And if there are questions you have, you can either go investigate those things on the internet or you could ask your teachers for some thoughts. But uh, this week we're focusing on the differences between plant and animal cells. So if you look at the slides, this tells you a lot. There's, um, you know, there's slides that specifically address that, what the difference is between the plants and animal cells. So, um, so all the cells uh, are the basic building blocks of all life. And so there's obviously a different structure to plant cells versus animal cells. So as you can see, here's an animal cell and there are various things that it has that when compared to a plant cell uh, is different. We've got a cell wall, that's a clear difference. Um, and so mitochondria you'll find um, is, is in each. That's one of the favorite organelles. It's one that uh, produces the energy that we uh, use to grow and play and do all that stuff. Um, so if you look between these, you'll notice some things that are similar. You'll notice some things that are different and that's also highlighted on the slides. So take a look through this if you haven't done so. Uh, don't skip to just the thing that's going to be put into the grade book because I think you'll miss a lot. Uh, these videos are very um, helpful. Watch those and then move on to the gizmos. Um, this is the assignment that may be giving some of you a hard time because uh, it, it's, it requires that you uh, explore and you look through um, various materials and uh, look for um, look for ways to compare the materials to one another. Uh, so if you haven't done so yet, obviously go here to the cell types uh, gizmos that's been assigned and I'm going to launch it so we can look at it together. And I may or may not cover everything you have questions about, so just explore. And if you have questions, email your teachers. Um, and so this is the basic uh, lab, and you could, if you wanted to, uh, go down to, let's see, I think lesson info. You can always do this student extension sheet. This kind of walks you through stuff. I think that's where it is for you guys. I'm not sure, but there should be something that says student exploration sheet. This will walk you through how to use this if you want to use it. We're not requiring that you do it, but it might help you kind of guide you through the lesson. We don't assign that because we just thought that it might be too much. We might pull from those in the future. But bottom line is, if you have questions, go ahead and use that. Um, but what you really have to do is just explore. And this is a, a landscape with various things. If you don't know what you're supposed to click on, it'll show you if you click here, it shows you all the things that you can click on. So if we just explore this a little bit, now keep in mind, these are the five questions that you have to answer. So you could just look at your answer or look at your questions before you start to explore if you want to. Uh, but the bottom line is you're just going to click on something. So let's look at, uh, let's look at human skin. Here we go. So this tell, it shows you click on the object, explore the landscape. There are many hidden after the sample is human skin. So uh, what you do then is you click on microscope and this is a microscope. And we typically talk about the parts of a microscope. We might put something up about that later. Uh, but these are your controls. And if you're not using a mouse, it's kind of a little difficult to use, but you got to you, you've got to click on this uh, bar and scroll it back and forth. This is our course uh, focus. So it's where we get the, the largest change. Uh, when I move back and forth, you can see. Uh, so you kind of want to get it into the best focus you can. Click on and then leave it down. And then find focus is when you want to kind of fine tune it. You can look at it even more carefully. You might notice a small change as I do this, but that focuses it in a finer way. This move moves your stage left and right. So if you want to move your object, this moves it up and down. 
So play with that a little bit, get used to do it. But this is a this is skin under a microscope, and um, this is what it would look like. Now, if you want to increase your magnification, you can do that. And I would suggest you do so because now we're looking at a cell. Now, this will show you a scale bar to show you the, the size of the cell. Um, and so this will also label the parts. And so if you didn't explore that, I would do that because this is going to help you obviously understand the parts that you're looking at underneath the microscope. So um, that's that. And so if you look at this, this will help quite a bit. I'm moving it this way and I'm going to move it up or down. There we go. So now I'm going to get rid of the scale so I can see it. So right here is a cell. We've got our cell membrane and we've got the cytoplasm, the stuff that everything is uh, floating and existing in. And then we got the nucleus. So this is at 400 time magnification. That's what a human skin cell would look like. Okay. So that's what you have. Let's see information. This tells you a little bit about it. Uh, then the test for life. This is important. Um, this basically tests to see if this is a living thing. So when you click on that, what we have here are petri dishes with uh, what is called a uh, phenol red test, and that indicates uh, the indicate uh, the existence of an acid that is produced by living things. And we got this um, ATP test, which will uh, glow green when there is the existence of ATP, which is an, uh, I think an enzyme or a, uh, an amino acid, I think, uh, that is uh, present in living things. Uh, so what we have here is basically a positive control. So this is going to show you what it will look like when there is the existence of ATP and uh, carbon dioxide that is produced by living things. This will this is what it's going to look like if there is no living uh, or no no existence of ATP or or carbon dioxide. And then this is what we're going to look at as our sample. So right now we're going to we're sampling the human skin. And we're looking forward to see if these change. Now, I think it's if you turn the lights off, this is where you see the, the biggest change. If you leave them on, you'll see it, too. But this is uh, I'd put them off. Uh, and then you hit this button down here, control. And then this is where you can control it. And this is where you're basically saying you uh, put the sample in the Petri dish with the uh, with the testing agent. You put the sample in here with the testing agent and then you're going to let it sit. And this is you letting it sit. For a period of time you see the change so right here you can see that this sample the human skin does glow red so that that tells you that there's existence of atp energy and we also see the change from the this original color to this orange so that shows you that there's an ex, uh, the uh, presence of carbon dioxide so that's what we're looking at um that's that tells you that there is that this is life so if you go back uh the other thing you can do which is kind of cool you can go to this tells you this is your clipboard so it tells you what you've done skin has atp and respiration meaning it gives off carbon dioxide uh so that's that you can go back to the landscape pick another thing uh, i happen to know uh, oh, sorry about the phone ringing um sand and silt so this is obviously something that you could probably presume doesn't have life so as we look at this we'll have um we'll have wait for that phone to stop ringing sorry but um, so we look at that under a microscope pretty cool because when we looked at sand um, and rocks and we're looking at soil this is what sand would look like under a microscope that's at 80 times is it 400 times so this gives you a pretty good so this shows you the label there is really nothing to label here because they're, these are not cells they're not living things it shows you that All right spoiler alert it's not living um, so there we go. So this is your sand and silt test. Um, and again, spoiler alert. So click on it. This is an example of where you see a positive control, meaning this is clearly what it should look like if it was living. And there's a sample, nothing happening. So there we, we know that this is not living. So we click on the clipboard. We now have tested skin. We've tested sand and silt. And so what you're supposed to do is go through all of these things and uh, explore them and determine whether they're they have uh, they're living. Look at them under a microscope. Get to know their parts, um, you know, of the cells and stuff like that. So, uh, once you have that done, you go down to the bottom here and you try your best at answering these five questions uh, completely, getting at least three out of five, hopefully five out of five. So I hope that helps. If it doesn't, uh, email your teacher.
ask questions. My Google Meet for uh, my science class is Friday at 10 o'clock. So look on the Admirals page there for a link to that. That'll be up there around 10 o'clock. So I hope you guys are doing well. Please email me if you have questions. And I miss you guys. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye.